Hello, I'm Norbert Gleich. I'm the medical director and chief scientist uh, here at the CHR. I was asked many times why I started the CHR. Uh, the CHR was started as a faculty practice at Mount Sinai Hospital in Chicago. In 1981, I was recruited as a very young uh, academic uh, out of Mount Sinai uh, Medical Center here in New York uh, to become the chairman and professor uh, at uh, that hospital, which was an inner city hospital. The faculty practice was CHR in those days. We not only provided fertility services, um, but covered the whole field of OBGYN because we represented the department of OBGYN. I found a rather sleepy, if I may call it that, OBGYN department when I assumed responsibility as chairman. Uh, and coming with a group of uh, academics out of New York, we were uh, very uh, strongly influenced by what we previously had experienced here in New York. And we decided we had uh, to make our department more visible. And those were the early days of in vitro fertilization. And in the whole Midwest, including Chicago, there was no IVF program yet. Indeed, in the whole country, there were probably less than half a dozen IVF centers uh, at that given point. And so I decided that the quickest and best way to put our new department on the map in a very big city like Chicago with many famous hospitals and many excellent OBGYN departments was to try to become the first IVF center not only in Chicago, but in the whole Midwest. But in those days, you couldn't hire any experts because there were no experts. Uh, the one center that was leading in the United States uh, in Norfolk, what is now called the Jones Center for Reproductive Medicine in Norfolk, Virginia, had a long waiting list of over one year to come and learn how to do IVF. And so I decided I'm going to send the head of my infertility division uh, to Sweden to a well-established IVF center because he was Swedish. And I sent myself to another very well-known center in Paris run by Professor Friedman, who at that point also had already established a very well-functioning center. Two weeks later, we were experts. That's how quickly one could become an expert in IVF in those days. Because that's how small the knowledge was in those days. We shortly thereafter officially announced the opening of the first IVF center in Chicago. It became a huge event. Uh, the Chicago Tribune, uh, the leading newspaper in the city, embedded uh, their senior medical writer with us for a whole week and uh, once we made the announcement over two days uh, gave uh, double pages, full double pages to the story of the first IVF center opening in Chicago and in the Midwest. And we very quickly became successful and uh, very quickly uh, became one of the biggest IVF centers uh, in the U.S. In those days, uh, we did over 2,000 cycles, which was an enormous number, and uh, therefore very quickly received a lot of attention, not only for being a large center with a lot of physicians, but also for making some key discoveries that really improved and drove IVF uh, forward. Probably the single most important of these discoveries was the retrieval of eggs transvaginally. 
In those days, and I'm talking about the first few years of IVF, in those days, every time a woman had her eggs retrieved, she had to go into the operating room of a hospital. She had to undergo a surgery, a laparoscopy, and through that laparoscopic procedure, we retrieved eggs. And then we got the idea that why couldn't we do this with a long needle and the ultrasound control through the vagina? And we indeed did it, and we reported the first such case in the famous Lancet uh, journal, exactly the same place where, where uh, the original, the first IVF pregnancy was announced. And IVF never was the same because conversion from operative retrieval to vaginal retrieval made IVF into an ambulatory procedure. It made it more accessible, it made it much cheaper, and it is how ever since IVF is practiced. That's how the CHR started. Thanks for listening.